What is going on YouTube and Weight Loss Warriors? It's your boy C Dub and I'm back with another video. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about the science behind fasting and I'm going to do it right after this. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Earlier today I was watching a guy talk on YouTube about the science behind fasting and he was just hammering out uh, th these studies are done on rats and, and whatever else and he started talking about how he had come across this this new article today and how this new article basically debunked everything that's ever been said about intermittent fasting and all the science behind intermittent fasting and he went on to say they studied you know x number of people versus x number of people and the calorie restricted people came out just the same as the intermittent fasting people and this is yet again proof one more time that the intermittent fasters are crazy and they're out there, you know, disrupting the, the diet world for no reason. And he was just going on and on and on. And so I, I was waiting for him to tell what the name of the study was and more importantly, link the study in the description and he didn't do it. And so it kind of took me back and I was like, you know what, man, I've seen it over and over and over again on both sides of the, the intermittent fasting uh, regimen. I've seen the supporters and I've seen the guys that are totally against it both come up with the same kind of idea that they're gonna just say a bunch of things on YouTube and they're not gonna back it up with hard science and that's where the problem lies guys that's where the things where I tell you all the time you can't believe something just because you hear it and that people are selling you science and, and they're not really backing it up with any science they're just saying the word science to you and then they're expecting you to buy their product to change what you're doing and it's really just to profit them and in this case his channel and his system and his his way of lifting and his way of exercising and sell you into his 90 day program or whatever the case is so I want you to be real careful guys today I'm gonna to do my best to break down some of the science but be real careful and understanding that there is not a lot of research on this topic and it's something that neither side really wants to come out and straight say we just don't know everything that we would like to know about intermittent fasting and time restricted eating there's been tons of studies done on rats guys so we're just going to talk about that briefly in the rats it's definitely showed better insulin uh, resistance it's definitely showed that their insulin resistance decreased in other words it's definitely showed their longevity were three times as long it's shown that their brain function was better. It showed all kinds of crazy great benefits in rats. They also did studies in monkeys as well, and those studies have come back positive. The studies in people, on the other hand, are very small. And here's the problem with the studies in people. The problem is they don't do the right protocol. And this is where all of the bro science comes in and they want to hit you hard, all you intermittent fasters, and say, it doesn't work don't intermittent fast but what they're not telling you is most of the studies done were done after the the 5 2 uh, or alternate day fasting documentaries came out and most of those studies they did allow the people to eat on the two, on the 5 days so in other words i mean on the 2 days so in other words you're you're supposed to be eating whatever you want for 5 and fasting for 2 well, on those two days, they stick to what the guy did in the documentary, allowing you 500 calories. And you can eat it in any way, shape, fashion, or form you want. So those people can spread those five calories over, like, let's say, nuts and eat them all day. Or whatever it is they want to do. So they're not really fasting the same way that most of us are fasting. And so it has shown in studies that the 5-2 method with 500 calories a day allowance on your two fasting days doesn't lose any more weight than when you are just on a calorie restricted diet so if we're eating the same amount of food and we're just reducing it over the course of a day whether that be six meals or three and we take that and we compare it against taking 500 calories out on your two fast days and eating them and then eating the rest of the way the rest of the week the same there is no major differences so that's been proven there's enough science that backs that up and every bro scientist guy that wants to throw that out into the intermittent fasting world is inherently correct on that here's the thing though they've never done the study 
where the person fasting on those two days didn't eat at all. They've also never done a study that's really solid on a, on a plan like OMAD or really solid on a real alternate day fasting. The alternate day fasting plans they did, fast one day they're allowed 500 calories. The next day they eat whatever they want. Fast 500, eat whatever they want. Those are the way that they've programmed these different scientific studies, which I don't even know many people at all, if anybody in our fasting community, that's really doing either one of those plans. That's not what it's really all about, and those 500 calories really can throw you off. But they have done a few studies, guys, and just recently there was one done at, all right, there was a study done in, at the University of Alabama that took several groups of obese men. And I'm gonna have this linked in the description below so you can see it with your own eyes. It took several different groups of obese men and they restricted their time of eating. And one in one large group they, they put together, they restricted their eating to seven to three. So an eight hour window where they ate at seven in the morning till three in the afternoon. And they took another group and allowed them to eat throughout the course of the day. They controlled what these people ate so that they weren't really in a calorie deficit so that they could judge about equally across the board. So at the end of this study they found that nobody lost any weight which when you think about it they're eating at maintenance so your weight is not going to be significantly impacted in either group. But what they did find in this study was that the obese group of people did have better insulin sensitivity which is huge guys. We're talking about the thing that creates type 2 diabetes was lower their blood pressure was lower, their cholesterol was lower. They, they also talked about having a better sense of clarity than when they started. So that group of people in that particular study in Alabama showed, the University of Alabama showed, that there are some benefits outside of weight loss that intermittent fasting in a 16 to 8 protocol does help you but I do want you to keep in mind one other thing their 16 to 8 protocol was from 7 in the morning to 3 when most people do it the other way around most people are going more like a noon to 6 or a 1 to 7 you know 2 to 8 kind of window so they thought the circadian rhythm had a lot to do with it and the best meal was the one at breakfast doctor I want to get her name right Deborah Wexler the director of disease and Center uh, of Control, Associate Professor of Harvard uh, Medicine, the School of Medicine, uh, said that the circadian rhythm approach to an eight to 10 hour eating window seems to be efficient. So guys, if you're eating in that eight to 10 hour window, it seems to help your circadian rhythm. She did note though that they do not recommend eating past 6 o'clock at night, that it can mess up your sleep schedule and it can mess up your circadian rhythm. So that is one example of a study that was done on humans that supports maybe not the weight loss side of things, but it does support the fact that your insulin resistant, which we all know is a giant part of weight loss, goes down and your type 2 diabetes uh, rates will come down with that as well. Your heart disease drops, your cholesterol, so all of those good things that we're looking for. But the key is this, and this is what I want everybody to understand and what I've been preaching since day one of this channel, and I want you to understand this when we talk about the science behind it. Most of the research to intermittent fasting comes from Jason Fong. It actually really does. He's done or he's put, put data out more than anybody else. He wrote the book, um, the Obesity Code in 2016, he has been a front runner of, of putting that information out, but that's one source. You can never trust one source. That's one person that also wrote a book that's trying to sell his book and trying to sell his style as the answer when there isn't a counter to it. There's not enough studies done. I personally think a lot of what he says is probably spot on true. Do I think that all of it could be? I don't know. I think that that is preparing yourself to stretch out what you want more than what the facts are. So what do we know the facts are? The facts are two-thirds of America are overweight or obese. Two-thirds of America are overweight or obese. We have an obesity problem in our country. We have an obesity problem. We have an overweight problem and it's not going away. It's growing right now. The youth of today are bigger than they've ever been. 
everything we have set up around us sets us up to fail and so we know we are eating too much we can sugarcoat it in any kind of scientific way we want to sell whatever product we want here's what you need to know about the science of weight loss if you eat less you will lose weight period so why does that matter and why does that come back to intermittent fasting and the science of intermittent fasting and why is that being said in this here video today it's being said for one simple reason because if you take your eating window and you shrink it you're going to eat less the smaller your window the less you're going to eat i am a classic overeater by doing omad i know i'm not overeating and i've dropped 125 pounds because of it bottom line is you can call it whatever you want but if you're eating less often you're eating less and therefore you're losing weight so it doesn't take science guys I know you clicked on this video for the science but I'm telling you now YouTube is full of bro science YouTube is full of people pushing their product YouTube wants their products pushed the YouTube content creators they want to take your money out of your wallet they want you to do their diet plans they want you to do stuff as a matter of fact even in the health industry right now the Mediterranean diet is I looked it up today three or four different places is the recommended diet can anyone tell me what the Mediterranean diet is who knows you know what I'm saying it's an impossible diet that can't even fit into our culture right now bottom line is this is the facts you have to eat less so you want to know the science behind intermittent fasting eat less often and you will lose weight because you're eating less if you continue to gluttonize yourself in that one meal you are going to not lose weight if you continue to eat in your eight hour window way too much food you're not going to lose weight we cannot change unless we intake less food guys unless we intake less food I just want to throw one more statistic that I saw today out there in, in, in my going through there are obesity and, and weight doctors that are the, the best of the best supposedly in our country say that we eat between 500 calories too much a day which by the way is a pound of energy a week we're eating over 500 calories a day and in obese people's cases, they're eating twice what they should eat in a day. An obese person's eating two times what they should eat in a day. Guys, you can't overeat. You can't overeat. Take that science. Take that science from me right now. You can't overeat. Science of intermittent fasting, stop doing it. All right, guys, I've held you long enough. I appreciate you guys. Keep growing this channel. Don't listen to the bro science. If they don't link the study down below, comment to them it's unacceptable. Say, hey, listen, you didn't tell us where your resource is. Because if they're not telling you where their resource is, they're lying to you. Bottom line, they heard it like the guy today was talking about it. He didn't even tell you the name of the study. Who does that? He, he didn't give you any information at all. So he heard it somewhere and he's telling you now. That doesn't work in the real world, guys. That's not real science. There isn't enough science on intermittent fasting, and that's not going to change for a bunch of years, guys. They're just now starting to get into it. These studies take a year, two years, three years to publish and make happen, and then they've got to research, and they've got to do It's going to be a long time before we really know what happens with intermittent fasting. But we do know this. Eat less. So let's start there. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.